Hey, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to properly set up an OpenAI memory store. Now, the reason this is so important is because if you don't have one of these, essentially what's going to happen each time you do a webhook over from Go High Level and try to push it over to your AI appointment setter, it's essentially going to restart the conversation on a brand new thread ID. So if you can imagine each time it'll loop and the conversation won't get anywhere as far as the next step in the appointment setting flow or whatever script you have configured in your AI knowledge base. And this is something that I had an issue with at first. And and I looked online everywhere. I even looked on the make.com developer section and no one has a specific video on how to set up a memory store from go high level over to make.com. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys who use the go high level platform, how to actually set this up. So you have genuine conversations and the AI is actually able to remember everything. If you guys haven't seen my last video going over AI appointment setters and how to actually build them out, I'm going to leave a link up here right now and also leave a link in the description. I recommend you go watch that where I give a full encompassing guide on how to actually create the build both on go high levels end and make.com's end. And today we're going to be specifically going over the memory store aspect over on make.com. So before we even jump on to make.com, there's one step we need to do before the webhook takes place in order for everything to get set up. So click over to your outbound message node, the one that you're sending the webhook from to send over to go high level. Now this is a sandbox build I did in my last video, but if you can imagine a user gets triggered from the tag being added and then they get pushed through the pipeline, we're updating the contact field with the message that they gave us in order to send that payload over to OpenAI so they can actually reply to us. And then finally, we're sending that webhook over to OpenAI. Now, what you need to do right after you send that webhook is you need to type tag and then click add contact tag. Now, what we're going to do here is type in the word webhook. It doesn't matter what you put, but for the sake of this, we're going to do webhook test, right? Now, any place you have a webhook node, I want you to place this after the fact. And again, for this example, we're doing webhook tag, but you don't have to. You can do any naming convention you want. Just make sure you remember it. Okay, I'm first going to walk you through the logic of the build, and then I'll get into the actual step-by-step, -step, and we'll build it out together. So like I was just saying, a user replied and they had their tag added and we got our webhook shot out. Now the idea is that the webhook will get shot out and then after the fact, the tag gets added, right? So when this incoming webhook comes in, the first thing it's gonna do before anything else is quickly check to see if there's a tag associated with it. And it's gonna be that webhook example tag that I just showed you or whatever one you chose to name it. So what you're gonna do is set up a router with that and the router will have two different scenarios. The first scenario will be the tag did not contain the word webhook from the payload that we sent over just now. But if it does indeed say webhook, then we know that it's the second time that that user has been there. So when a user hits OpenAI for the first time through make.com, it's gonna create them a new thread ID and essentially just build out a uh, new conversation flow for them, right? Now, if you loop through this, it will continue to build out new thread IDs and essentially your conversation will go nowhere. And it's not as simple as just adding a thread ID data store after the fact because there's no previous information to go off of. So what you have to do is let the contact through the first time around, let it naturally go through OpenAI and send it back to go high level. But then what we're going to do is we're going to capture that specific thread ID and we're going to associate it with the specific contact ID. Now, if you can imagine the second time the lead comes around, they're going to have a webhook tag this time or whatever naming convention you chose in which they'll go up through this section and the data store will act to find that contact ID that's associated with the thread ID. So now when we're pitching it over to OpenAI, we have the thread ID already in place. And so the conversation essentially just picks up where it left off. And then finally we shoot that payload back over to go high level and the conversation just keeps on flowing. All right, cool. So now you guys have a basic understanding. So let's get into building it. All right. So first things first, you're going to click webhooks and then you're going to do a custom webhook. Click create webhook. And then I'll just name it for the sake of naming it. All right, and we're good to go. And then over on Go High Levels End, what you're going to do is click Copy Address, and then you'll transition this over back to the webhook section. And of course, paste it in there. Click Save. And now we're immediately going to add our router. So just type in router. All right, so our router set. So on this bottom node, just to keep it consistent with what I just showed you guys so there's no confusion, we're going to scan for the tag that takes place. Oh, you know what? I actually just realized we don't have any data in here yet. So what I'm going to do is simulate a lead coming through, and it'll throw over some sample data. All right, so I've just tagged myself. I'm going to message on Instagram, so it'll trigger this Insta flow, and we'll actually be able to send over a webhook. So this is not live, so what we have to do is click one runs so that our new webhook starts listening. So I just DM'd myself on Instagram. There we go. And it's okay that nothing else happens, but if you look now, um, so if I click back over to the filter where we just were, 
we should now have a ton of different data populating in here, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So for condition, you're going to sift through. I've got a ton of custom fields in mind. You'll probably have less, but you're going to look for tags. And see, it says example tags right now. So if you do pile on multiple other tags, they'll all be shown in here. But essentially what we're going to do is scan for the term webhook. And for this bottom section we're building, this is going to be the fresh lead first time coming through. So we're going to do does not contain case insensitive and then type in the word webhook. webhook. And what case insensitive means, if you do uppercase, lowercase, anything in between, it'll still uh, actually capture that. And then conversely, here up top, we're going to use that same tag. And then we're going to do contains case insensitive as well. And then type in webhook and then click save. All right, so now we have our differentiator set up, so now we can actually get into building the nodes. So for the bottom section, click the plus, open AI, message and assistant. And I've already got my assistant link. Again, if you want to see the full tutorial on how to do all the nitpicky things, go watch my previous video and then come back to this one. And everything will make sense, I promise you. So click assistant. I've already got my assistant selected. And we're going to change role to assistant and then add in your payload. This will make sense if you watch another video, but... Um, you can also write like a custom message in here. It depends on what you were going for. I'm just going to use a response for the sake of this example. You're going to want to click show advanced settings. And so you can actually select your model. I like using 4.0. Scroll to the bottom, response format, text. All right, now moving along, you're now going to type in go high level and select the go high level node. And then we're going to be doing the update contact. So click on that, connect your go high level account. And then for contact ID, we're going to be using the red webhooked contact ID. Let's go ahead and click on that. And then after that, scroll down, find your custom field where you're dropping off the payload. Result, and then click Save. Cool, so now we've generated the new conversation, and we've sent this over to Go High Level. So now we actually have to build a data store to store this specific contact ID so that the next time it comes through, we have an associated thread ID that we can put with it so that the OpenAI conversation picks up where it left off. So you're going to type in data store, and then we're going to be selecting add or replace record. And we're going to build a new data store, so I'll show you how to do that now. So example data store. And then you're going to click add here too, unless you have a structure built, but I'll show you how to do it from scratch. Full data store, and then click add item under specification. So first we're going to do contact ID. You can leave it as text. Don't put anything under default value and make sure this is required because any lead that comes through here should have a contact ID. Otherwise you're doing something wrong because everyone on go high level has a contact ID as soon as they get generated within your CRM. And then what we're going to do now is click add item once more and we're going to type in thread ID. And this doesn't really mean anything other than placeholders as far as what we're looking at here. And we'll input the actual values here in a second. So you're going to click save. Okay, cool. So now we have our example data store set up. So you're going to click save on that. And then as you can see, we have the nodes that we just added here. So what we're going to do is add the custom data within. Scroll down back to the red web hooks, and you're going to find your contact ID. Select that. And now over on thread ID, go over to OpenAI. There's no results in here yet because we haven't generated a response. But if and when you do, then they'll show up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click thread ID. And next time a lead comes through here, it'll actually have some data associated with it. Okay, cool. So we're set up. So what I'm going to do now is send over another payload request over to make.com. Uh, but before I do that, I actually have to go ahead and strip my uh, tag that I just added. Otherwise, it's going to go up top. All right, so since my user already went through here, I had gotten that tag. So I went ahead and removed the webhook test tag. So I'm going to send over a new text now. And I don't have the tag, so it's essentially simulating a fresh lead coming through here for the first time. All right, just sent over that text once more, so it'll only be a second. And as you can see, it naturally went down because there's no webhook tag associated with it. OpenAI is now thinking right now. Usually takes a second, depends on how big your knowledge base is. And bam, we went ahead and got that successful note. And I actually got my message generated as well, just to confirm. And as you can see here, the data store was updated. And now you can confirm your data store by clicking the More button over on the left panel, clicking Data Stores. Save changes real quick. Now here's our new example data store that I just built. So as you can see, there's my specific contact ID, and this is the brand new thread ID associated with my user. 
Now, if I went ahead and deleted my user and came back through here, it would build me out a new thread ID, a new contact ID, because even if you're under the same phone number or if you're under the same Facebook account, Instagram account, if you delete your contact within Go High Level and then re-add yourself, it's going to auto-generate a brand new contact ID. So the good part about this is that any historical contacts you have, there's never going to be an issue where they suddenly lose their thread ID. But if you do delete your contacts, be careful because then you will also lose your thread ID associated with that contact ID. Okay, so for the sake of showing you guys, I went ahead and deleted my contact and I'm now going to resend a message over on Instagram once more. And I now have a new auto-generated contact ID. And as you can see, it'll go back through that bottom node because I'm a fresh user coming through. And I'll show you after in the data store, it'll generate a whole new row, the new thread ID associated with it. Now, if you can imagine, if you don't have this data store set up, this is essentially what's happening to you every single time you send a webhook over here. So it went through, uh, data store updated. So if we look back in our example data store now, even though this is from the same account over here on Instagram, I have two contact IDs, two unique thread IDs. So this is the problem you've probably been facing as far as not being able to have a proper memory store. So I'm now going to show you how to call the memory stores that we've been saving and actually use that thread ID each time so you have a running tally of memory. So press the plus button and then click data store. And this time we're going to do search records. And then what we're going to do is we're going to query for our existing data store, example data store in this example. And what I'm going to do is find contact ID and then say exists. And this is just confirming that we do indeed have a contact ID. And now what we're going to do is cross-reference our contact ID with our generated webhook contact ID. So essentially what this is going to do, it's going to go through the data store. It's going to look through all the different contact IDs and it's going to find the row where the contact ID is equal to the recent webhook contact ID we just brought in with the new payload. So go ahead and click save on this. And now we're going to build a new OpenAI node, and this time it's going to be slightly different. So go ahead and select the same assistant as before, pretty much do all the same inputs that I just showed you guys. I'm going to go and throw in my custom field, and this time, this is the big difference. We're going to add thread ID. So if you noticed before, we didn't have this data store field, but now that we're searching over here through the data store, it's going to give us direct access to the thread ID associated with that contact ID. So click thread and then show advanced options again, just so we have autonomy to actually choose our model. And then bottom, switch this to text. And then you're good to click save. All right, we're in post up now. I just finished recording the video and realized that I forgot a step, so I didn't want to leave y'all hanging. So after you go through the search record, you have to do a, another filter through here. So you're going to right click, set up filter. And you want to make sure that the condition is set to uh, the contact ID specifically from the record that we just generated. And so when you're redoing this in the build, I'll just include this part of the video, but it's as simple as, because it's now calling the specific search record. So you click contact ID, and then of course the associated contact ID from the webhook section, and that will push everything over to OpenAI. And because we associated the contact ID within our system with the user contact ID in red, then we're able to get the proper thread ID, and that's how it successfully pulls the specific thread ID. All right, and then finally, you're going to do your high-level connector again. Update contact once more. Add that same contact ID so we don't lose them. And then scroll to where you find your custom field payload in order for us to return the uh, ChatGPT auto-generated message. And we're good to go. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save now. And I'm going to run this again. So if you remember, my user has now gone through the system. It's gone through this bottom one. And it's created a contact ID store for us. And on Go High Levels end, since we had that initial webhook, it's gone ahead and applied the webhook tag. So now when I message again over on my end, I'm going to click Send. And it's going to recognize that it's a pre-existing user. And it's going to push it up top, as you see here. Perfect. It found the record. And ChatGPT is now thinking, sending back to Go High Level. And then in a second here, we should see, cool. Hey, how's it going? It just replied because I asked it how, how is it doing? So that's pretty much all there is to it. And now you don't have to worry about leads getting mixed up with one another as far as the conversation goes. ChatGPT is not going to be wasting time making tons of new threads and you have a way more organized way of actually dialing in your AI appointment setter. Almost forgot, but the last thing you have to do is actually turn it on. So you can go ahead and click this, delete old data, that don't matter. And then click this to save it. We should be good to go. So switch is on so you know we are ready to receive messages. So what I'm going to do now, 
I'm over on my Instagram account. Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it, challenge it to see if it does have true memory. So I'm going to just ask it a few questions, make it a little bit personalized, and then ask it to recall everything I just said. And this will be the true verifier that it indeed has a memory store. So I'm just asking it, tell me about your services. I trained this one on my specific business model. So it knows about the AI integrations that I do and how I'm using AI sales systems to scale clients. Okay, cool. So we got our first message back already. I'm doing cold outreach. Wait for a message reply there. We're just going to kind of tell a sob story. I'm not getting any leads. I meant 1K a month. All right, it replied again. So I'm just going to say I'm looking to get to 50K a month and planned 20 clients consistently each month. All right, so it's kind of getting the call proposal. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to ask it to send me the booking link immediately. And then once it sends me the booking link, I'm going to ask it to regurgitate everything that we just talked about just to confirm that it indeed has memory. But the fact that it's already going through my step-by-step -step flow is already kind of confirming it in itself, but just an additional test to make sure. Wait. Before I book in, I want to see if you were paying attention. All right. If and when it does restate the conversation, we know we are good to go. So there we go. I had previously mentioned that I'm at 1K a month, aiming for 50K a month, looking to get 20 clients consistently. And yeah, guys, that's all there is to it. I hope you found this video useful. And I know setting up automations like this can be stressful at times. But if you're looking to get more understanding of how to do go high level automations, make.com automations, set up sales funnels and properly market yourself using meta ads, Google ads, and ultimately just get your business to scale using AI powered technology, then go ahead and drop a sub. And I'm going to be dropping tons of different videos in the future, going over different automations, tools, workflows, client experiences, and how I'm currently scaling my clients using systems like this. Some of these videos take a long time for me to put together for you guys, so I'd really appreciate it if you drop a sub, and it's just going to motivate me to continue to drop value for you guys. If you're new to this page, I don't gatekeep. I give everything away because what's the point? I'm not some guru. I'm here to give you guys the actual sauce that you came on this video to see, and on that note, I'll see you on the next video.